So Governor Cuomo has denied any wrongdoing involving Brittany Camiso's claims. So will he ever be put on trial for the alleged groping that you just heard described there? Here to tell us more about those issues is Beth Karras. She's a former Manhattan assistant DA, legal analyst, and now host on several programs on the Oxygen ch channel. Beth, good to see you this morning. Well, good morning. So, Beth, let's get into it, because now that he's resigning, the big question is, do you think that they will pursue criminal trials against Andrew Cuomo? And by the they, we're not talking about the Assembly and, and Senate anymore. We're talking about DAs across the area. Well, it is true that several district attorneys, uh, four or five in the state of New York, are opening investigations or at least have asked the attorney general for some of the materials that were developed during the course of the past several months in their own investigation. Now, it's important to keep in mind that not all bad conduct is criminal. And most of the conduct laid out in the AG's report is civil in nature. But Brittany Comiso's allegation does really jump out at, at one. And that rises to the level of possible criminal conduct. It's an A misdemeanor, forcible, touching, punishable by up to a year in jail. Not prison. It's not a felony. And it could be a non-jail sentence. Now, um, and a jury of six yeah. would, uh, would hear this, not a jury of 12. But we're a long way mm -hmm. from actual charges being filed because the attorney general's report probably is full of inadmissible evidence at a criminal trial. It's a very different standard for the Attorney General. This is an investigation. She laid out what the investigation found. Now the Sheriff's Department and the District Attorneys have to determine it, what the admissible evidence is and what the crime is, if any. Mm. So, and by admissible, I mean, you know, can't be hearsay. It's right. got to be properly right. uh, obtained evidence. Well, Beth, I wanted to dive deeper into that because on one hand, a lot of people saying this was a win for women who are the victims of sexual harassment and sexual assault. Unfortunately, in many of those cases, there is not a lot of evidence. It's a situation. No one's taking photographs. No one's recording anything. So it's a kind of a he said, she said. So when it comes to this evidence, and if there is not a lot of evidence, do these uh, allegations, do these cases really kind of fall flat? Well, it's a good question. Uh, cases can be proven in a he said, she said, but you do need some corroboration. In Brittany Comiso's case, she doesn't remember the exact date. Now, you don't need the exact date in sex crimes, for example, because things are reported much later and people just don't mark it on their calendar. But um, I don't know that this will be an insurmountable obstacle um, in, in the case because she knows generally when she was there. But I do think we're going to see the governor do what he's already started to do was deny the allegation, but say that when, when she was there, there were other people there. It could not have happened. Don't be sure. surprised that he didn't make any sort of admissions yeah. uh, because he knows he's going to be sued civilly. He knows there, there are these criminal investigations and any statements he makes now could possibly be used against him. So just to be clear, Beth, because you're right referencing the terms of misdemeanor, specifically in the case of, of Brittany Camiso there, what would a district attorney need in order to prosecute that case when it comes down to evidence? And what would it take for the sheriff who's now conducting that investigation to say, okay, we're going to go arrest him? So it's hard for me to talk about that, excuse me, in a vacuum because I don't know all of the evidence yeah. and it's a judgment call and one DA may file charges and another not looking at the same crimes or the same conduct. But certainly Brittany Comiso has to be, has to stand up. She has to be able to stand up under cross-examination. I have no doubt that she would. So if she, if she has to recall as many facts as possible. If she told people fairly close in time, those people need to have, you know, similar recollections. So you need some corroboration. You need to try to, you need to establish that she's been there on a number of occasions yeah. and maybe narrow down the time frame. So there's a lot that the um, Sheriff's Department needs to still look at and the district attorney. But it's hard to say, you know, because it's, you. Real, it's discretionary with the prosecutor whether or not to bring a case. And you don't bring cases unless you really believe mm -hmm. that you can prove it beyond a reasonable yeah. doubt. You know, so that brings me to this. As other jurisdictions are looking to see if they have criminal cases pursued, what's the statute of limitations? I mean, when will we have to see complaints filed elsewhere? So the statute of limitations is two years for a misdemeanor. So, uh, and that's what we're looking at here. I don't see any felonies that jump out at, from the AG's report. I don't know if we know all of the evidence, but an ongoing course of harassment could rise to the level of an E felony, which is a five-year statute of limitations. But anything in the report in 2019, 20, uh, 2020, those are within the statute. Other conduct that goes back several years probably is not prosecutable. Mm. Understood. Beth Karras, appreciates your voice this morning and knowledge and kind of laying it all out. Yeah, good, good to, to see, see you again. My pleasure.